I'm Keen 47 aka Wolf Keen, and welcome to another edition of Wolf Keen Talks. Uh, one thing I forgot to do in my Fallout 4 uh, wishlist video. There. Now no one can say I missed that. Today on Wolf Keen Talks, I want to talk about an interesting subject. Have you ever played that game, that one game, where you think it's the best thing ever, and then when you ask people about this game, try to do a little research on this game, or talk to others about this game, they don't even know what you're talking about. Like, as soon as you tell them, oh, did you play this game? That, came, that Did you play this game? Everyone's going to be looking at you like, uh, what is that again? What I'm talking about is ga is like great games that no one played. There are a great example of these, of games that were so good, but no one played them for weird reasons and stuff like that. And I'm going to talk about one of the more um, obvious ones for me. One game that I really feel like is really good, but no one played it, was Ghost Recon Future Soldier. I know Ghost Recon Phantoms is out now on the PC as a free-to-play game, but... I'm talking about Ghost Recon Future Soldier. I really don't see people talk about this game at all. Like, I barely hear people talk about Ghost Recon Future Soldier. And I think it's a shame because Ghost Recon broke the mold for what kind of customization you could do with your guns and stuff like that. I mean, seriously, the customization in Ghost Recon Future Soldier was insane. Like, <coughs> sorry. There's a lot of customization that you could do from under-gassed guns, over-gassed guns, laser sights, grips, red dots. And there's so much customization to be done with these guns. And there's so many different objects like x-ray scopes, um, over-gassing your gun so it's a higher firing rate. And uh, like different stocks to give you like better control or maybe better accuracy but slower speed and stuff like that. There was just so much customization in this game that I'm sad no one talks about it. I think this game had the best customization in a shooter. And not to mention the story itself was a load of fun. Like, the story itself was interesting, it was fun, and it was a challenge. This game was a challenge. If you weren't on your, if you weren't on your game, you were going to get wrecked. And the one thing I loved about this game is that it had four-player story-based co-op. And I think that's a great thing, having four-player story-based co-op, because I think we've all been wanting a tactical-based game like this and wanting to co-op it, like Rainbow Six, for instance. Rainbow Six, you could do two-player co-op. Here, you could do four-player co-op. Like, each player takes a member of the team, since it is a four-man team. And, you know, that actually plays a little bit more of an interesting role, because... If you have four players playing this game at once, you're going to have to rely on each other, just like how uh, you know, just how the squad would rely on each other. This game actually brings players together in many cases, and you really have to play smart, because if you play stupidly, you will die, and it's so easy to die in this game. And like I said, story is great, I love the characters, the customization is insane, and I have mixed opinions about the multiplayer, but I still think it's pretty good. I just wish more people talked about it. Like, I just wish more people talked about the game. Another game that I don't hear a lot of people talk about, which is a little sad in my opinion, but then again, not a lot of people heard about this game. Tokyo Jungle. Now, I know you're all about to ask me, what's the idea of Tokyo Jungle? Well, to my shame, when I used to watch Dark Side Phil, he bought this game known as Tokyo Jungle. And I was like, Tokyo Jungle? What kind of game is this? So I watched this playthrough of Tokyo Jungle, and after I watched a few videos of it, I was like, this is interesting. This is a very, very interesting game. I want to play it. So I bought it, and it's one of my favorite download games from Sony Japan. Yeah, it was made by Sony Japan. Tokyo Jungle, you basically play as an animal. Well, basically, you know, humans have disappeared, and there's animals that have inhabited all of Tokyo. So you play as different animals just trying to survive. You can play as an herbivore, you can play as a carnivore, and there's different animals ranging from like something as small to a Pomeranian, something larger like a hyena, maybe even a tiger, a sick -a deer a gazelle, and other stuff like that. You can play as all of these different animals, and your main goal is to just survive as long as you can. And I like this concept of having to survive as long as you can because... The game is a challenge. Like, this game is challenging at times, especially in the later stages. 
Don't lie. I won't lie that the toxicity is a bit of a problem. I won't lie on that front, but I like this idea of of survival. This game, like everyone talks about the animal kingdom and their will to survive and stuff like that. This game emanates the idea of survival. Eating what you can, taking out whoever you have to, taking territory, finding mates, and then having offspring. All of this is incorporated in Tokyo Jungle, and you have to incorporate every element, otherwise you're going to lose. Because as the years keep progressing, the animals get tougher. So unless you get tougher, you're going to get wrecked. So that's what I'm trying to say. Like, you'll start off with like a weak animal at first, but if you keep, you know, like if you keep mating with the right animals, like, you know, good animals, not dirty ones, you'll get better stats. If you do the challenges, you'll get better stats. Thus, you get better. AKA the idea of natural selection. That's what I'm trying to say that Tokyo Jungle had this interesting idea and the story is actually interesting in some cases. I won't lie on that front. And there's one thing I do like. You have to play the survival mode to unlock the story. Basically what you have to do is like you go into the survival mode and you find these information that you find like these information about what happened to the humans and then you can play a story mission. After you play that story mission and beat it, you can go back to the survival and get more information to unlock the next mission. I like this, how they integrate the story and the survival into one package, basically. I don't hear anybody talk about this game, Tokyo Jungle. And I was talking about it with one of my friends on Skype, and he even told me, like, this game sounds hell of interesting. I never even heard of it. I'm going to go check it out. So I'm glad that, uh, you know, I was able to sway someone's opinion on the game because... I really do feel like Tokyo Jungle is one of the more interesting games on the PlayStation in many aspects. And that's just being honest in some cases. I mean, here's the thing. Most of my choices are pretty current. Most of my choices of games that I really feel like are good that no one played are current choices. And this one's kind of like one that I really wish people would hear more about. Because... Everyone knows my love for the 007 license. Everyone knows I'm a huge 007 fan. And I've been waiting for that next good 007. Like, my favorite is Everything or Nothing on the GameCube. Along with Nightfire, of course. I love Nightfire. Then, of course, we got some more current 007s. We got Quantum of Solace, which was... Eh? And then we got GoldenEye Reloaded, which... Oh, that game is terrible. GoldenEye Reloaded can go die in a pit. However, we did get a good GoldenEye game. I mean, we did get a good 007 game. And hardly anyone talks about it. Like, hardly anyone talks about it. The one I'm talking about is 007 Bloodstone. I barely hear anyone talk about Bloodstone. And that's kind of a sad thing because I think Bloodstone is as good as Nightfire. And Nightfire was a great game. Not only in it like in the story as well, but also the idea of its multiplayer in some aspects. Bloodstone, the reason why I say, you know, it's a great game is because it uses the same elements that everything or nothing had in many cases. It was a third person shooter instead of a first person shooter. It had amazingly good stealth elements inside the game. And it had some good systems within the game itself. Where, you know Blacklist, where you can mark enemies and then take them down with like a, a single shot, right? Go, um, Bloodstone has this, where if you knock out an enemy, you get one counter. This counter allows you to do like a quick game to the person's head and then get an instant headshot. You can go up up to three of these, and you can imagine how this would be good for a situation. Like, say there were three guys in front of me, and I didn't want to sound the alarm. I could do that ability to just go, bloop, 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 and they're all dead. Like, they didn't sound the alarm because I killed them within that sequence because time slows down. Not to mention the story itself is interesting in many ways, and I do like the combat in this game. The combat will test you at times. This combat is not easy. Like, it will test you if you let if you uh, do something stupid. And not to mention, there are plenty of stealth in, um, opportunities in this game. You could stealth your way through the entire game. Well, not all of it, because there are sequences where you have to fight, but you could stealth your way through almost every part in this game. And I like that, because he's a spy. 007 James Bond is a spy. You should be playing stealth, not running and gunning. 
That's what I'm trying to say. Like, this is why I love Bloodstone, because it encompasses the idea of playing stealthily, of being a spy. I mean, if things go wrong, yeah, you gotta fight. But if you can avoid fighting, you do it. You take them off you take them out without letting them see you. Stay behind cover, wait till they come to you and stuff like that. Use distraction. And they had a great integration with the smartphone because you can pull out 007 smartphone and not only will it show you where you're supposed to go, it will show you enemy locations and it will show you guns. But the good thing about the smartphone is that you can't have it out while doing all this. If you move too much, the smartphone will lose its signal. Thus, you lose the enemy locations. So, you have to plan it out properly. Like, say you're behind cover and you want to know what's ahead, you can pull out the smartphone and see where the enemy is by their gun symbols. And it also shows if they're alerted or not. If you see a question mark, that means they're caution right now. They know you're around, but they're, you know, like basically searching for you if you see an exclamation point that means they've seen you and they're coming after you and if you see nothing that just lets you know that they're fine like they don't know you're around i love this aspect of integrating a smartphone because if you want to do more actions you have to put the smartphone away and go back to your weapon and i like this idea because a smartphone plays an integral role in the game <clears throat> I just wish more people heard about Bloodstone. I am halfway tempted to do a Let's Play of Bloodstone. And you know what? Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you want me to do a Let's Play of Bloodstone. I already got my next three Let's Plays decided, but maybe I'll put that in there along the way. So anyways, guys, those are three games that I feel like that people don't talk about, and I really feel like they're great games. I know they're current, but then again, I didn't play a lot of classic games that people should talk about i mean the classic games that i played i'm pretty sure everyone knows about vagrant story dino crisis resident evil parasite eve and other stuff like that like there really isn't a lot of classic games or anything like that that i feel like are great that no one talks about not even on the gamecube you mean like not even on the gamecube that i own do i have any games like that like i could look i could take a quick look real quick um not really None of my games, I really like that. Like, I have Sunshine. Everyone knows what Sunshine is. Luigi's Mansion, everyone knows what that is. So, I don't have classic choices. I only have current ones. <clears throat> so, I'm going to ask you guys. What are some great games that, you, that no one talks about? Like, what are games that you feel like are great, but no one talks about? Go ahead and leave your comment down below, and we'll discuss it in the comment section. Some quick updates. If you haven't noticed or haven't been following my Twitter feeds, this is a no upload week for me this week. The only reason I'm uploading this is to give the update. The reason why I'm not uploading this week is because I need to record some new footage for my My Little Pony vlogs. And I also plan on sitting down and trying to beat 13. Once I'm done with 13, I'm going to get to work on my newer Let's Plays. Because I do have a few newer Let's Plays I'm going to be doing Right now, they're under wraps. If you're a part of the True Gamers group, then you would know what my newer Let's Plays are going to be. But um, let's just say this, guys, that my three newest Let's Plays, one of which involves sniping, one of which is one of my favorite series of all time, and the other is basically me continuing a series. Figure out, what, figure out the games from there. Sniping, favorite series, one of my favorite series... And a continuation of, of a series that I've been doing. I'll leave that up to your speculation. So no uploads this week, guys. I'm going to be working on some new videos. So anyways, that's all I need to say this week. Go ahead and leave your answers down below to the question I asked. What are some great games that no one talks about? Go ahead and leave your comments down below. So until next time, guys. I'm Keenan 47 aka Wolfkeen. Hope you enjoyed. And until next time, guys, take care.